Hey friends, this is something that we have actually talked about in a couple of previous videos, but that there is a nice little overclocking hack, I guess you could call it, that allows you to unlock the RX 5700 and get a little bit of extra performance out of it. And we're gonna be talking about how to do that in today's video, whether or not it's worth it, and potentially what are the risks. So it's gonna be a tutorial slash kind of analysis of the soft power play table overclock that you can do on the Navi cards. I do wanna check out the 5700 XT, but I didn't get one of those before they went out of stock in the country. So I'm waiting for those to come back in stock next week. And then we're also waiting on EK to send us a water block for our Navi cards. And then we're also really gonna do some extra testing. But for now, it's just the stock setup on the reference cooler and we're gonna be examining it after I tell you about today's video sponsor, The Ridge. My friends, The Ridge, makes some really great products. They're minimalistic. They're great interpretations on everyday products that you would have, whether it be the slim front pocket wallet that comes in a variety of different colors, such as carbon fiber and titanium, or things such as a backpack, which I absolutely love, can carry everything that I have, including my giant laptop, a Nintendo Switch, and a bunch of other stuff that I put in my backpack to come to work every single day. Their wallets are especially great. They're RFID blocking. They allow you to slim down from a gigantic piece of crap that keeps all of your receipts this way, you don't have room to keep your receipts. You can either get it with a cash strap or with a money clip and everything just looks so freaking good. So in case you wanna pick up some of these great products and experience what minimalism looks like yourself for everyday things that you already have, go to ridge.com forward slash UFD, enter UFD as a coupon code to get 10% off and free worldwide shipping. Again, that's ridge.com forward slash UFD, UFD as the coupon code, you save 10% and you get sweet, sweet looking stuff. Okay, let's talk about sweet stuff, which is this RX 5700 from AMD. We did all of the testing that we could possibly do with the 5700 and the power play tables that are available. We're gonna leave links in the video description for you guys to check out and follow along. It's actually quite simple once we get into it, but I kinda want to talk about the card first. So the RX 5700 actually has some artificial limits placed on it by AMD. You can't overclock over 1,850 megahertz and the, the memory is also locked down. And the highest you can go on the power limit for overclocking is 20%. That is presumably because AMD doesn't want the 5700 to encroach on the 5700 XT's territory. Because if you can overclock this thing to well beyond its limits, then you're like, you're only $50 away from the 5700 XT and it could make that obsolete. So we're gonna look into that. Is that true? Or is the 5700 locked down because it's worth silicon and you can't actually get as good of an overclock out of it? That's also a possibility. So we tested out the power play tables, which are basically registry level modifications to your computer to tell the graphics card to behave in a different way. So these are actually graphics card level modifications that you're making. And as with anything with overclocking, if you don't know what you're doing, you could potentially screw it up and ruin your card. So keep that in mind, you could brick it. I did the worst with this. I set voltages that shouldn't have been set and my 5700 still lives, so I'm okay with it. But again, warning, there's giant warning signs. Do this only if you're comfortable with doing it. So there are a couple different power play tables that are actually available thanks to the link that uh, Igor from Tom's Hardware so easily provided in a zip file. You have one that allows you to get up to 2100 megahertz on the core and it increases the power limit to plus 50%. Then the second major one is something that allows you to get up to 90% power limit and has a voltage increase of, I believe it was 1.255 volts. And then there's also a third one that's very similar to the first one, except for instead of a 50% power limit, it has a 79% power limit. Although I found that one to be not useful at all, but I'll talk about that in a second. So in order to get your computer ready for this, you have to prepare your system first. It does this by registry modification. So you have to make sure that your registry is actually set up. If you go to this specific line in the registry and you click on it, if there's a folder that says 0, 0, 0, 0, and that's it, 
then you should be good to go. But if it has anything more than that, such as 0001, or in my case, up to seven, then you actually need to uninstall drivers, which you should probably do anyways, just as a precaution. You can install DDU, which helps you to uninstall your drivers down below in the comments. You should boot into safe mode, uninstall the drivers. For my system, I actually had to do it a couple times because the first time it didn't remove all of the AMD graphics cards. So I had to do AMD, then Nvidia, because I had a 2080 Ti on that system at one point. And then I had to do AMD again to finally get down to the quadruple zero only folder on this section of the registry. So do that, make sure that's set up, and then you can install the drivers for your Navi card. And then it's as simple as downloading the zip file that's provided down below, and then like double clicking and technically installing the registry modification. So you can install more Power 5700 or even more Power 5700. And then it's giving you a warning sign saying that you, you're gonna have issues with registry modification. You just sit yes, and then you're good to go. And then you can do one of two things. You can either restart your computer to restart the display driver, or you can download the handy utility called CRU, which allows you to just refresh the driver on the fly. And I'll leave a link for that in the video description. But once you refresh the driver, driver, the registry modification should take hold and then you have up in both uh, Radeon Wattman as well as in something like Afterburner, you now have the ability to go up to either 50 or 90% power limit and adjust the actual frequencies on the graphics card well beyond the 1850 that AMD has it hard locked to. So it's a pretty simple setup. It's mostly just kind of clicking on things and then you're good to go. You're not doing any sort of like hex table modification. It's fairly straightforward. And again, big thanks to Igor over at Tom's Hardware Germany. He is the one who compiled this handy to use guide. So you guys can go check him out. He's also done a video on it. We'll leave a link up there for you guys to check that out as well. But now comes the actual bit of testing. So in our preliminary testing of the 5700, we did everything at stock with our Ryzen 5 3600. That's set to stock speeds, but then also has uh, the RAM clocked to 3.2 gigahertz. And then we had the 5700. It has the game frequency of 1625. It has the max boost of 1725. While we were playing games, our average boost frequency was around 1680 megahertz. And then our max OC with the AMD limit that was actually on the card, we got up to 1850, but in in actuality, the card was hitting 1,780. That's what it was averaging. And what we saw was we got about a 5% increase in things like Time Spy, but then also in video games with our largest increase coming in at Assassin's Creed Odyssey and our smallest coming in at Far Cry New Dawn. But there was an increase of anywhere from two to 8.8% in all of the games that we tested once we overclocked the card. Now comes a little bit about actually doing the registry modification overclocking. And what we found was that we couldn't really get that much more out of the card, which makes me think it's not just a lockdown on the frequency because they don't want to get close to the 5700 XT, but just the 5700 is worse silicon, so it can't overclock as well. So first up was the more power registry modification. That allowed us to hit 1900 megahertz with the 50% power limit increase. Again, this doesn't change voltage. The more power registry modification just allows you to have power limit and unlocked uh, frequencies. So that's all we got. We got an extra 50 megahertz, which resulted in about a one to one and a half percent increase over what we could get without the registry modification, which isn't great. And it wasn't due to temperatures because we actually decided to set a really, really harsh fan curve on the reference model RX 5700. And so our average temperature was around 60 degrees Celsius. We weren't getting anywhere near that. And the fan would have been at 100% once we hit 70 degrees Celsius. So it has a really, really aggressive setup and the, the temperatures were fine. The noise was not, but the temps were fine. So we weren't temperature limited. It seemed like we were voltage limited. So I decided to go ahead and install the even more more power and that allowed us to get up to 90% power limit and then you could increase the voltage there. However, one of the notes that is on the Igor's lab uh, guide for this is that the even more power registry edit is experimental at this point. And what I found was that it gave us no additional performance. None of the voltage modifications I was making on the card allowed me to get anywhere past 1900 megahertz. And it could just be that it's still experimental and there still needs to be some more modifications that go on on the voltage side of things. Because in Igor's testing, he found that the 5700 XT could hit like 2.2 gigahertz and was totally fine. 
this should more than likely be able to do that. It just didn't have the capacity. So there's probably some more tweaking that will have to go on down the line. It could be somehow that it was temperature related and we weren't seeing it on any of the temperatures that we were measuring, but I'm gonna guess that there's probably some voltage stuff that has to be regulated. So after everything was said and done, we tested all of the registry edits. The best setup that I could get was 1900 megahertz on the core clock, and then I could do that at a 40% power limit. I didn't need to go all the way up to 50%. And that really didn't result in that much power. I think we peaked at something like 220 watts and that was peak power draw of the card so it's not really adding that much power but it's only adding 50 additional megahertz and while we hit 1900 in the clock what was what the card was actually running at was about 1835 megahertz so it's not a huge improvement and it doesn't seem like there's that much benefit that's coming out of unlocking the 5700 and giving free reign on the overclock it seems like there still needs it could be a driver update that could come out from amd side it could be that the even more power could be manipulated a little bit more to somehow figure out how to get a better overclock or it could just be that um there's something that I'm missing. So if you've played with the 5700 with the power play tables, let me know down in the comments and I might be able to get some more out of it. Again, as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, we're still waiting on EK to send us some uh, the water blocks that they have now announced for the 5700. And we're gonna try to see if we can get some more juice out of it once we decrease the temperatures by quite a bit. But uh, I'm actually not that impressed by this. An average of 1% increase over max overclock, which was super easy for me to hit like 1850 megahertz i just hit the slider hit 20 percent apply it ran flawlessly there was no issues whatsoever you set a decent fan curve the uh 5700 reference edition can handle it so after everything was said and done with the power play tables we we're hitting eight percent over stock but we're only 1% over the max overclock if we don't mess with the power play tables. So take that for what it's worth. I honestly, at this point, wouldn't recommend that you touch these things for the 5700. It seems like the 5700 XT has a much better time with it. We'll be doing a video on that as soon as we get our card in, which as I mentioned, should be uh, this time next week, we should have our 5700 XT. So we'll be doing a follow-up video on that as soon as we get that card. But uh, yes, 5700 unlocked overclock didn't seem to be worth it. Let me know what you thought of this down below in the comments. Don't forget that today's video sponsor was The Ridge. Head on down to ridge.com forward slash UFD, enter UFD as a coupon code, save 10% on anything on their site and get free worldwide shipping. That's amazing for somebody like me who just ordered some Linus Tech Tips merch and had to pay $100 for shipping. Uh, you know what that means. I don't have enough money for chicken nugget. South Africa is not friendly to your wallets when you're importing things. Anyways, hit the like button if you enjoyed it. Get subscribed to stay up to date on all of our tech-related content. Hit the notification bell if you want to stay really up to date. Also, consider supporting us on Patreon if you want to. We're releasing videos as early as we can possibly do on Patreon, and we do it with no ads. So uh, your Patreon support actually goes to uh, paying our bills. So we don't give you ads for that reason. Check it out down below. Yeah, that's it. I'm Brett with the UFD Tech Channel. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you smiling faces again in the next video. Love you too. Bye.